All right, what's happening guys? We're doing knife stuff today and I carry this guy all the time, but more and more I've been carrying this little karambit. It makes me feel like a ninja when I pull it off, but I don't actually have any idea of what I'm doing. And it actually scares me a good bit, but again, feel like a ninja. So I thought I would be able to consult pro knife thrower, Jason, he's a buddy of ours. He's got some content on the network and he is just master knife fighter guru, and he's gonna school me up on the karambit and we're gonna bring you with us. So here we go. Guys, pro knife thrower Jason, we just filmed a master class for you, throwing knives and teaching some like sneaky attack methods with <laughs> knives, right? Yeah, it was a blast. Man. It was. A, you, you guys are gonna it. love it. You crushed it. Can you teach me how in the world to use this thing? I can. And what is your background with this? So, as you know, they call me pro knife thrower. I've been throwing knives since the fall of the Berlin Wall or for about 30 years. Okay. And uh, I've taken Filipino knife and stick fighting for most of my life, uh, Cabla Serrata, Escrima, uh, various methods of martial arts. And I've come across karambits a time or two, you could say. Yeah. And uh, I've put into application and actually tested a lot of karambit stuff. And there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And, can definitely give you the basics of what you're after. So I want to learn how to use this and I don't want to hurt myself while doing it. Sure. Teach me the art of the karambit. The karambit. Okay, so traditionally the karambit was a field tool and the ring that everybody likes was used because I could bend over in the field, grab my karambit, grab the grain, suck it like a hand sickle, put it in my pack, put it back in. So it made it That's easy to grab. Interesting, but very boring. I, I'm, right. I'm thinking like pack of ninjas, so I'm gonna, a zombie or two, and I just, you know. We're, we're gonna get you effective, so I know it's boring, but the reason I'm saying that is because this little doodad right here is great for withdrawal and how you draw that out, and it comes out into your hand like this, right? You pull that out and it's in your hand. It flips around once, it's in your hand. What I would like to program you to do is not keep your finger in it. And the reason is, is because even with the stab, that jerk on the knuckle, it causes problems. And also, this is great because it's not super curved. If I have a super curved karambit and we go for this slice where we're swiping like that, it's great to cut water bottles, it looks great, but when I actually impact something of force and mass, my cut collapses. My fingers rake across it and I get a shallow cut with the blade. Now, if it's really curved, it provides leverage force to turn. If that turns in my finger, so it goes with it. So when you pull that blade out, full fist grip without that it's still going to retain the knife in your hand that ring is still there for hitting boom jab but you keep that ring on top of your hand now to cut like this i'm pretty much a stabbing tool at this point because a swipe like this while it'll give you a cut where does that leave me yeah way completely open. I mean, open. Want to take exactly yeah. so there's two methods to using this karambit and i like what you guys have done with this karambit specifically because it's not so curved so that allows me to get a full purchase on the grip without having to have my finger in the ring, as well as this. Now, remember I talked about in classes, this pulling method. Yeah. Now, same thing with this method, the same swipe that you're making. Your angles of attack, whatever's sticking out towards you, cut it. What I want you to keep in mind when you do that is to bring that karambit out, take your finger out of it, get a full fist pack like a pack of knuckles, and you can just straight punch with it. You can punch and swipe, you can stab, and then if you actually need to cut, you'll be pushing away from you, right? Gotcha. So if I'm here and you go to uh, attack me, which don't do because I have a live edge blade, but it's gonna be really hard for me to cut your leg like that, yeah. as opposed to if I could just rip it out. Yeah. So being able to flip that around and having the mental wherewithal to know where your blade edge is facing is great. Either way, this, this, and this are all effective methods of gripping a karambit. I wanna put it in you and not just sewing machine attack. Got I wanna stab and push or pull away. If I could set this down, and maybe we'll have like a dummy. Yeah. And that's just the same angle, so you can see it, I can touch you. You reach out toward face, and I have my hand here, this. Punch toward the face, but I'm swiping. I'm cutting, and then I'm trying to bring it back in. I don't wanna waste any movements. So if I have my karambit blade edge out, and I cut, I'm gonna turn that down and cut again, or stab in, and then turn and pull. Can you go up that angle of attack where it came up and then back down again? Sure, so you're, you're on right side. I'm here, I'm, I'm completely covering myself. I'm not reaching out. I don't wanna reach out for you. I wanna cover myself and I'm gonna come here and basically hit and push across. Push in and if I have to turn, turn. So it's the same thing with that blade turned this way. It's the same method. 
if I'd come across this way or this way to punch, just to push you away and stab in and pull down. Whatever I'm trying to do, I'm trying to cycle. This is the one where you turn the blade around blade's so it's towards coming me. back. And as a grappler, I love that because I can be able to catch pull, yes. and be able to rip. Absolutely, uh, cycling weapon. Yeah. You've seen in jujitsu, I pull your head into my chest. Yeah. Well, if I was to put my arm over your head, over your neck, and use my back muscles, I pull that head in, Karambit's blade edge toward me. Well, now I have it in the side of your neck and go and pop that spine yeah. and stop moving. So that's the same kind of principle, whether it's blade edge toward you or blade edge toward the enemy, that same method applies. Be aware that you cut like this, my, my fist is going to collapse. Got it. Right? So it'll leave a cut, but this on the back cut, don't waste the movement. So if I'm here and my blade edge is out, I can't go like this and stab it in your leg and cut the tendons and then come back down for another. I can stab, but now my edge won't cut towards me. Mm -hmm. So it's just to have good mental wherewithal, which, which way your edge is facing. And you can practice this with manipulating how you're holding that blade. I can hold this blade this way. This is more effective than this. Got it, yeah. Just because and, of how it works. And you got a good bit more reach, too. Yeah. And how'd you show me how you draw this? So, so you got the flipper on there. So go ahead right and here, draw that out. I'll, grow, I'll loop in and then okay. I basically turn it and pull against the so I'm going to show you a really cool way to work this blade. One easy method where I can pull that out in an emergency. Somebody's over top of me. I, you just started to do it. Really? Now yeah. look, uh, let's put that down and I'm going to use this as my karambit. And let's say I'm here and I'm not paying attention and somebody comes up and bear hugs me. Right? <laughs> I got this. Now let's turn around so they can see. Dance with me. So come back on the, so they thought can see my arm. I thought you'd never Oh, come on, let's go. So I'm not paying attention. Bear hug. I got karambit out. Now look, stick, drop. Oh, that's going to just, just drop the that's weight. That's going to open right? everything. You don't have a choil on that knife. Perfect. Good. That means the clothes and the skin and the flesh won't get caught up in where it starts to get sharpened. Right. Right. That's very important. So question, let's say that you, you were able to escape that first quick little ambush. You've got a tiny reactionary gap and you've got your karambit. You can choose between here, here, and here. Right. How do you personally prefer to hold your karambit if you already had a little bit of a space and you I got could one get of these distance. things? I got awareness for distance. You, you I'm gonna survived. hold it to cut away from me. Got it. Awesome. Now, if you close the gap and I have it here and say, well, I wanna cut into me, it doesn't matter. If you're still closing the gap and I'm here and your legs out, we're grappling up here and I get my blade back here because I don't want it here. Whap, yeah. Right? Whap, whap. Get, get those cuts. Right. If whatever you're reaching out towards me, if you reach out for a, a strike and if I can get the cut on the hand, that's great. But I'm going to tell you that you know how boxing works. I can throw a punch and it's hard for you to jab. So you're already in that space. Yeah. So have your blade up. Don't. You know, yeah. like have yourself guarded. No, you, you offer him the blade, you're just gonna get it taken away. Try to keep it what we call chambered. Chambered in my body. Block where I need to block. Don't block out here. Don't reach out here. Body of the short arm monkey. And cut what comes out. One of my favorite things, you grab my arm, I'll just do this and cut oh, down. That's And awful. just push, you know that's what I mean? Awful. And then keep going. And I always thought like, well, grab somebody's wrist with their knife, they can still do this. Yeah, but. You got to grab their to fist. To fair, there's not a lot of great options other than run there's or not. shoot it's, when someone has a blade. Now you know right. why I throw knives. The quickest thing that you're going to have is awareness. If you don't have awareness and that knife folds, the saving grace of that knife is that it opens right. when you get it out, like my espada or like a fixed blade. Right. So if I have awareness, then you get choices. This is ineffective in a fight at the time you need it to be effective. Yeah. It just doesn't work because the body has a thick membrane around the organs. The knife will actually slither around the organs and they can move and you will still be moving. That's like with knife throwing, the impact is what I want. So with a knife fight, a stab is almost ineffective unless you hit a vital. You have to hit the heart, have to hit the spine, a nervous system of some type, something that actually disables the body because adrenaline will keep it going. Aim it at gnarly spots and open them up. Mentally digest it and think about, and more about the commitment to danger than it is the learning how it's done. Awesome stuff, man. Hey guys, make sure you look for it on watchwpsn.com. Jason's gonna go through all kinds of crazy clever knife fighting tricks and throwing stuff and that's coming to our streaming service and app so make sure you download that and i uh, hope you guys have learned something awesome about the scary karamba i still am afraid of it i'm still, still afraid of it. of it i like that you're awesome at it but i got a long way to go and uh anyway guys make sure you're subscribed to the channel toggle notifications about it all like comment share all that stuff check down below for relevant links that help you out help us out Make sure you train hard, train smart, and stay free. See you guys.
I'm gonna show you how to devastatingly deliver an impact to a person who's out of your reach. So if I have this as a tool in my toolbox and the opportunity arises, then I have a second to decide whether or not I can take him to church. So this is a level three hard plate and my knife just went right through it.